Oh, Google, man, I, I gotta hand it to you. You guys have been setting some records with how can we devalue our current flagships as quickly as possible, especially when you start promoting your next generation phone like four or three months in advance. Why on earth, if you're promoting the Pixel 4, would you keep selling the Pixel 3 on your site? Now, granted, I'm sure the sales aren't very high, so it's not like you're really hurting yourself that much by promoting the 4, but yeah, today Google unveiled a little bit more about the front of the Pixel 4 and not just the back this time and giving us a more detailed in-depth look and is this what they're doing now like i hope there's no event because at this point google just really has to announce a new feature of the phone every other week and then by the time the phone's ready to ship in october there's no need for an announcement you will have told us everything already but today's announcement was another classic move by google as in wh why let's begin so the announcement is essentially that Google is adopting Face ID-like technology onto the Pixel 4, even detailing all of the new sensors and hardware that they're embedding into now the giant forehead of the Pixel 4 bye-bye notch. And it does, of course, look quite similar to Apple's True Depth camera system, except, of course, this is taking up the entire top of the phone, not just a notch part of it. And it is also packing some sensors that Face ID doesn't have that will allow it to do what they're bragging about in this video, this completely unique idea that we've never seen brought to a smartphone before air gestures you're able to skip songs or silence your phone or wake the display by moving your hand over the screen. Obviously that's sarcasm. This has been done many, many times. In fact, six years ago, all the way back with the Galaxy S4, there have been things like air gestures in the past. Even up till recently, there have been some phone companies that have tried to make this work and tried to make it a selling point to their phone, like the LG G8 with their hand gestures and palm ID, being able to control your phone without touching the phone. But I hate to be the voice of reason in the room. Those phones never sold very well. Air gestures have never brought a ton of people out to upgrade their phone. What usually does it is a good display, a good screen to body ratio, or sometimes a decent camera or a good battery life, or better than all of those things is a decent price point, which I'll get into later. But the Pixel 4 is the first device with Google's new technology called Soli or Soli or Suli. I'm not exactly sure how they pronounce it, but this is a miniaturized radar sensor that will be analyzing your hand motions so that you can do those things like I talked about. Skipping songs, if you leave Leave your phone display on and then leave it at a table. And then of course, the adoption of face unlock, which look at that, Google's admitting that, hey, instead of having a fingerprint reader, it would be much, much better if we just ditched that and only had the option of face unlock. Boy, Google, where did you get that novel idea? Most of your competitors in the Android field all wanna have a basic face unlock and a fingerprint reader either on the back or underneath the display. And yet you come into the picture saying, no, we only need one really, really good biometric and that is a face unlock sensor. That's fascinating. I'm wondering what led you in that direction. What made you decide that just having one biometric that was better than having two average ones was the way to go? Not to mention in the video they showcased, the person has to get awkwardly close to the phone. Like, this is what makes me laugh so much about this Google demo. In order for it to work, in order for the phone's motion sense and face unlock to be practical in one ad, they had to make the phone floating in midair. See, the issue with this demo is for face unlock, typically you have to to be holding the phone to hold it up to you like that as the person in the commercial does they have to throw their face right in front of the phone but if you're doing that you more than likely are already holding the phone so if you're already holding the phone why are you using air gestures these two features that you're bragging about don't exactly go hand in hand in an intuitive manner i mean in order for air gestures to be practical your phone has to be on and then sitting at a table and then you do your air gestures over the top of it but if it's sitting at a table face unlock isn't gonna work very well because now you have to get up and make sure you angle your face to look right at the face sensors the exact precise way to make sure face unlock works. Now, a lot of people have had very positive and very confused reactions to this announcement. What I find the most hilarious, though, is how many people are rooting for the Pixel 4 most likely as an underdog, even if they turn around and do the exact polar opposite thing towards the next generation iPhone. Like, I can attest to the fact that everyone looking at the back of the iPhone 11 camera design says, ew, that's ugly, that's gross. But then as soon as I start 
started critiquing the Pixel 4 on Twitter, most people immediately followed it up with, well, Drew, you haven't tried it yet. And if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. And how do you know how good it is? Why don't you just wait till it comes out and then you can see if this is a practical choice. It's like, hey, where were all these people when the iPhone 11 camera design was being bashed? No one wants to defend that and say, hey, why don't we just wait till it comes out? Plus, we're critiquing things Google themselves are announcing. None of you who are critiquing the iPhone 11 have seen a single image from Apple of what the next iPhone looks like. All you've seen is concepts and renderings from other people that try to be accurate, but they're not directly from Apple. Yet when I'm critiquing directly from the source Google announcing these things, it's not even a leak at that point. That's just an announcement. Now everyone's like, well, why don't you just wait and see? Why don't we hold all judgment and not critique this yet and just wait until the product's been officially announced? No, <laughs> that's, that's not how this works in the tech market. If there's something to go off of, then we're going to judge that, especially if it's a first party announcement. Google announced these things. That means they're asking for judgment. Another minor note is that on the top part of the phone where they're showing off all these sensors, you no longer see a dual camera. So I guess if you enjoyed the Pixel 3 for having a standard lens and an ultra wide lens, they're ditching that this year. They love to ditch things at Google, don't they? And in response to the people saying, well, this is a different type of air gestures. It's using radar, which hasn't been done before. I'll remind you that there have been phones in the past that use dedicated sensors for air gestures. The S4 had a dedicated sensor. It wasn't just the camera. And so did the LG G8. They built in sensors on that phone just for tracking your hand motions. The performance of the feature is not why it doesn't catch on. It's because it's not that practical for an everyday consumer to be intrigued by. Most people are fine with touching the display on their phone. And if you showcase the air gestures, they'll probably go, oh, that's kind of cool. But then realize in their day-to-day -day lives that they're never going to utilize that. If they want to skip the song, they can just press the skip button. It's not terribly complicated. And I know there's a bunch of people out there that are like, what if your hands are dirty? I don't understand where they've gotten dirty to the point where like, you don't want to touch your phone. And if you're talking about them being wet or sticky, then that can still drip off onto the phone anyway. I'm just confused by that argument because we've had phones with air gestures in the past. Samsung tried really, really hard to sell people on the air gestures in their commercials. I remember dad changing diaper and wants to change the music or browse the website with his S5 and S4 by moving his hand over the phone. They've tried to sell this multiple times in the past, guys. It has never been a reason for people to upgrade. It's not a new feature. Just if you're trying it in a different way, even if this does perform better than air gestures did in the past, that doesn't necessarily mean it's suddenly going to be a top seller or a big reason for people to buy this thing. And there's a huge fundamental flaw a lot of people are missing with this announcement because I often saw people saying, well, air gestures may not be very practical, but why get upset about a feature in the phone? It's cool that it's there. You don't have to use it all the time, but hey, it's a cool new feature. Why hate on it so much? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Google is the company to charge $800 for a phone with a regular forehead and chin and just a typical standard fingerprint reader on the back. That was the Pixel 3 and they're still selling that despite announcing the Pixel 4 and its features and $800 for that phone with just standard, nothing special fingerprint reader. Imagine what a company like that is going to charge for a phone with all of these extra sensors on it. Face unlock IR camera, ambient light proximity sensor, audio port, solely radar chip, face unlock dot projector, face unlock IR camera, two of those by the way, and face unlock flood illuminator. A ton of features you've seen in Face ID ever since 2017. You guys, 800 bucks they charged for a phone with a simple finger print reader, now that they've added all of these sensors, all of the ones Face ID uses, plus extra radar sensors for gestures, you think this phone's going to be the same price as the three? With all these sensors being embedded, heck no, that's not possible. You're going to be lucky if they start the Pixel 4 at $900. There's more of a likelihood that they're going to start it at $1,000. And then the 4XL is probably going to be $1,100 because of all the sensors they're including in these things. Apple has tried really, really hard to embed these sensors and make the device more affordable affordable, getting the iPhone XR to $750. But if Google was a company with a track record of pricing things fairly, we'd be having a different discussion and say, okay, now they can provide the Face ID-like performance on a budget model, but they don't have that track record. They have the track record of charging insane price points for the Pixel Slate, the Pixel Book. And like I said, $800 and $900 for the Pixel 3 and 3 XL, neither of which had any kind of face unlock, four gigs of RAM, and really terrible battery lives. Don't believe me? Go check the replies on the tweet. Google made about the Pixel 4 today. There's so many people in those replies talking about how their 3XL's battery lives have been taking and doing horrible. And you can see just the Twitter account constantly trying to do damage control. We're sorry about that. Please DM us. We're sorry about that. Please direct message us and stop complaining about this publicly. 
We don't want the word going out that we don't optimize our hardware and software. That's the next big thing I wanted to bring up about the Pixel 4, is anytime people get excited for the next generation Pixel, they all seem to forget the fact that for the past two generations of Pixel phones, there's always been some design flaw or manufacturing bug out of the gate, whether it be RAM management problems, overheating problems, microphone quality problems, display calibration problems. They have a bad track record of keeping things up to par with everyday standards. So the fact that they're embedding all of these biometric sensors in the top means that I think there's a very good chance of it not performing well or not performing to its full potential on launch day, while simultaneously iOS 13 is going to launch before the Pixel 4 comes out, and that's going to increase everybody's Face ID sensors by 30% once they install it on their iPhone. Which brings me to my next point to the people who want to talk about how, hey, well, with this version of Face Unlock that Google's talking about with the Pixel 4, it works with multiple orientations, even upside down. That means it's better than Apple's Face ID, right? And it's more like the Face ID that's built into the iPad Pro. So they have found a way to make Face Unlock better than Apple. Must I remind you guys, you're comparing Face ID on a 10-month-old iPhone. Also, don't forget the release cycle for the Pixel phones, guys. The Pixel 4 is coming out after the iPhone 11. And we have very big reasons to believe that Face ID, hardware-wise, is going to be improved with the iPhone 11. It took Apple two years to improve Touch ID from the 5S to the 6S to make it much, much faster and more reliable than before. Now we've had two years of Face ID being the same from the 2017 iPhone 10 now to the 10R and 10S and 10S Max. So it makes the most amount of sense that once the iPhone 11 drops this September, that's also probably going to be a lot better. And given Apple's already made Face ID sensors on the iPad Pro that work from lots of different angles and orientations, they could very, very easily adopt an updated Face ID biometric coming to the iPhone 11, which will be dropping a month before the Pixel 4. So don't necessarily think that they've already beat the iPhone because iPhone's coming out first, people. And spoiler alert, way more people are gonna be interested in that thing. Mostly because I think Google's going to have a very hard time selling the average consumer on a phone that looks so dated. Like I know they're packing sensors into the top of that forehead and techies may appreciate that and say, you know what? I don't mind bezels, but the everyday consumer is just going to be like, this looks like an average phone. I don't care that it has face unlock or that it has air gestures. The Pixel 3a looks almost the same and has a $400 starting price. And I imagine the Pixel 4 is likely going to start at over $900. People are just going to look at the price points there and say, well, if this phone looks the same and has great camera performance anyway, why not just go for the 3a or the 3xl, both of which are under $500. Google's going to be like, well, uh, the Pixel 4 has a dual camera camera on the back. That's cool, right? Ugh, Google. I thought you learned your lesson. I really did. I enjoyed using the 3A. That was like the best phone you've ever made under the Pixel branding. I reviewed that and I said, you know what? This is pretty good. I think this is the direction Google needs to take themselves in. And instead they go ahead with the flagship and decide to dump a bunch of features in there that no one's going to utilize. I'm sure they're very proud of it. And there's a bunch of Google fanboys out there that are going to be drooling at this because a, a Pixel phone's doing something differently. But just remember, guys, this is going to come with a price hike. This is going to come with a step backwards in design direction. And ultimately all Google's doing for all you Pixel fanboys out there is following in Apple's footsteps. They're going to do whatever Apple's doing, whether it be face unlock, whether it be gesture based navigation with Android Q home bar. It's going to be square camera bump on the back. They're ditching the matte finish and glossy finish combo because that doesn't look enough like an iPhone. And of course now they're adopting the face unlock tech because that's what Apple's been doing. So you can count on whatever Apple goes forward with. Google will catch up to them about three years later. You can look at previous year's data to figure out how bad the Pixel phones really are selling. In 2017, they said they sold just under 4 million units. Then in 2018, they decided to stop telling us how many units they shipped, which is always a good sign. Just kidding, it's not. And then when they talked about the revenue of the Pixel 3, they said it was disappointing because of flagship competition. In other words, other phones were better, so not that many people were buying the 3. So you could assume that it was less than the 4 million back in 2017. And then once they launched the Pixel 3a, a $400 Pixel, they said their sales have doubled year over year, which yes, very easily means they've gone from 3 million units to 6 million units. Wow, congrats, Google. To give you guys context, Apple has sold over 15 million Apple Watches, and that's a watch. That's an iPhone accessory. In regards to iPhone unit sales, in the past, we've seen things like 70 million units within a quarter. So the fact that within a year, they've probably sold under 10 million, that's kind of what 
makes me laugh whenever I see these articles that say, you need to take the pixel line more seriously. It's like here on YouTube, you may think the pixel is way bigger than it is, but given the facts, given the evidence we have about their numbers, we know it's not very big at all. And that's why most people tell you when they're walking down the street or in public, they don't see very many pixels because not that many people buy them. Let me know what you think of the Pixel 4 announcements by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you guys in the next one.